Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today, Rich and I went on a road trip to Adventures in Stamping and stopped at the Impression Obsession booth and were able to watch a great technique on how to create a background out of many different background stamps. I hope you'll stay tuned and watch. Hi, I'm here at the Impression Obsession booth with Melinda, and she's going to demo their new and great products. Hi, I'm Melinda. I'm with Impression Obsession. I do their demos for them. And so what I'm going to be showing is how to make your own backgrounds with multiple colors. So um, we have quite a large number of background stamps, large background stamps. So let me choose one here. Let's do... Um, Let's do this particular stamp. This is one of the large background stamps. Okay, um, the background stamps are all five and three quarters square, so they cover an entire card. Okay, most of your cards are going to be four and a quarter by five and a half, so this will cover an entire card. Now, the technique I'm going to show you, you have to have a stamp positioner to do this technique. Okay, um, let me get a piece of paper here. We don't sell the stamp positioners. This is a Misty. Um, this is the one we have here in our demo box. At home, I actually use the new tonic board. That's the stamp platform. It doesn't matter which one you use, okay? You just need one. Now, normally with the stamp positioner, you have to put your piece of paper down with the magnet to hold the, the paper in place, right? Okay. In this particular case, my paper is smaller than my stamp. I can't use the magnet. So what I've done is I have put um, a couple of strips of this Tombow removable adhesive. You want to use the runner because the runners are really thin. Um, and I've got that down here to hold my paper in place. It won't hurt your board. Okay. You want to use the runner because they're so thin you can't feel it through the paper. If you use double stick tape, you can feel that and it'll show up in your stamping. So, so use the runner. Okay. Then I'm going to lay my stamp down on top of it. Close my lid. Now my paper and my stamp are going to stay where they are. Okay. They're not going to move. So the product I'm using now, the inks that I'm using now, are made by Impression Session. The owner of this company, she came out with her own line of inks. They're called hybrid inks. Um, a hybrid, if you're not familiar with a hybrid, a hybrid is a cross between a dye base and a pigment. A pigment ink are the really, the pigments are the really thick ones that stick to a stamp really well. Um, so this will ink your stamp really well. It also blends very much like a pigment if you've ever blend a, bl blended a pigment like with a brush or something. But it dries like a dye base. So as soon as I stamp it, I can touch it and it's dry. Okay? So I'm going to start with this one. This is mint. And actually, she came out with 48 different colors. Most stamp companies start with maybe 12 colors or so. She introduced 48 at one time. She did 16 dark colors, and then she has got a medium and a light of every color. So there's 48 colors that all, you know how to match them because they're made to go together, right? So I'm starting with the mint. I'm going to hold the pad flat down. I'm trying not to rock it so that I get any lines. Now I'm just getting some ink on there. I'm not trying to cover the entire stamp. Okay, you see I've got some holes there. I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to get some ink there. And then I'm going to stamp it. Okay, so you see I didn't get it completely covered and that's fine. That's what I want. I'm just wiping the ink, excess ink off of my stamp. Now I'm going to switch to a different color. I'm going to switch to the lime. Okay, again, I'm being very random, not trying to cover the whole stamp. Okay, see how the colors are mixing? All right, now I'm going to switch to another color. And instead of using, let's see, let's do peacock. Instead of using <coughs> the... Uh, ink pad directly on the stamp. If I do that, I'm going to cover a large area and I don't want to cover up a lot of what I've just done. I want to put color in specific areas, so I'm going to use my stipple brush. And I'm going to stipple directly on the stamp and then turn it over. Now, when you're using a stamp positioner, this is not this. This is this. Remember, it's just the opposite of what you think. So, what I do is I try to do just one area at a time, mainly because I confuse myself. <laughs> so to keep from being confused, I will just kind of do one little area at a time and build the colors a little bit as I go. And 
you can see the blues blending in with the greens. So it's kind of fun to be able to just build those colors yourself rather than just stamping in one color. Okay, I'm going to stop with that. So I'm actually done with this stamp and I am done with the stamp position. So I'm just going to peel this, peel this right up. Now, the only problem I have with this is all the white is very stark. I don't like for the white to stand out unless it's a snow card. But otherwise, I want to uh, tone down the white, add some more texture and color to it. So I'm going to choose a texture stamp. Let's do um, Rolling Waves, if I can find it. Here we go. Okay, so this one is called Rolling Waves. It's just a very heavy texture stamp. This is, a, this is called the Mega Mount. It's a, an acrylic block, not unlike your regular acrylic blocks. Okay? Uh, your cling stamps and your clear stamps stick to it, just like a regular block. What's nice about it is um, it has a slight bend to it, so it makes it easy to get a perfect impression every time. Uh, a lot of people, I've got a, a friend who has just really, um, really deforming rheumatoid arthritis, and her hands are like this, and it's very difficult. Like that. <laughs> See how you can grip it. Yeah, I have one. Uh, you do? I, okay. I just, I, I just it's play. much easier to grip yeah. than to try to grip a block, right? Yes, I am on YouTube. So She's going to be on YouTube and now so are you because you're in the video. <laughs> Besides having the nice handle that, that grips this, it also makes it very easy to get a perfect impression. Now, I'm not sitting down right now, but for those of you who have maybe seen me demo over the years, and I know some of you I recognize, um, you know most of the time I'm sitting down. I have to stand up now to use the stamp position because you have to put more effort into it, but with these you can be sitting down with your feet up and get a good impression because you do not have to bear down. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm putting this rolling waves over it. So you can see I got just a little texture, okay, not a lot, just a little bit of texture in those white open areas. Now, I'm going to do it again, same color, same stamp, and when I get done, I will sit down and show you uh, a proper technique. Now, I have rotated this a quarter of a turn so that my lines are going in a different direction than they were before. Okay. So I'm going to get more texture. So see, I got even more texture. Okay. So now it's kind of toned down the white paper, right? Which is my goal. My goal when I do these, I want them to look like printed paper. I want it to look like you could walk into a scrapbook store and buy this paper. So I don't want it to look like something that was stamped on white paper. I want it to be finished. All right. Now I'm going to add a couple more things to it here. So I've got another stamp that's called French Script, since I find it, and I'm going to stamp this over top. Now, I'm going to use one of the same colors that I used before so I know it matches, right? I'm going to use that same peacock color. Hopefully I got it covered well. Now. When you're using this handle, because it makes stamps so easy as far as getting a good impression, the one thing you don't want to do with some of them is bear down hard, okay? Because these are really fine lines. If you bear down really hard, they kind of splat out. You know what I mean? They just get really smush. Easy. Yes. <laughs> so it doesn't take much pressure at all. Right over it, and then you've got this really nice, really nice texture. <laughs> what I did under here, if you'll remember, the, the, the wavy lines, I used tan, mm -hmm. okay? So remember I said her ink um, come in light, mediums, and darks of the same color? So if I look right here at the tan on the chart, then the next darkest color is caramel and chocolate. So I'm going to go to the caramel. I'm going to use my stipple brush. Whoops, I picked up the wrong brush. Okay, pick up my stipple brush, and I'm just going to darken the corner. Okay, so I'm just roughly rubbing around the edges with these stipple brushes. These are my favorite stipple brushes. Okay, all right. See how adding just a little darkness around the corners makes a huge difference?
I hope you enjoyed the video from Impression Obsessions and that you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.